Oh my god, what are Rick and Ryan up to now? It's time for the Slightly Warped Podcast. Welcome one and all to another episode of the Slightly Warped Podcast. I'm Rick, joined as always by Big Show. What's up, Show? What up, man? How are you? I'm good. Uh, I'm I'm real good. You know, it's another week. I'm happy to be alive. I can't complain. Wouldn't do me any good if I could. Too blessed to be stressed. I got you, brother. Yes, sir. So... Got a couple different goodies to get through on the uh, podcast today. Uh, of our three topics today, I want to start off with this one because it's an interesting article that uh, I came across. Uh, I believe it was on one of the Facebook feeds. But uh, the title said, Dad to be upset after pregnant wife informs him their baby will be taking her last name. Now, before I pose the question to you, show, yes, we understand that there are a lot of women out there that do not want to take their husband's last name. They're right. I get that. That's absolutely their right. However, I am of the mind that if you two have a child together, that child should have the father's last name now i have seen some uh people that will hyphenate perfectly okay with that too um but i believe personally the child should where do you stand on that i mean i i right off the cuff initially i'm right there with you lockstep uh i believe that it should be the father's last name I would like to know more dynamics about their marriage. How long have they been married? Is this their only kid? Uh, that type of thing. Because it seems like it's a very young type of maybe. I mean, I don't know. Uh, I would if I was a guy, I would feel some type of way if the woman that's carrying my child didn't want them to have my last name. I would agree with that. And I'm trying to see if I can get more of the article here. Um, Okay, so this is from that Reddit thing, A-I-T-A, which means am I the asshole? So they <laughs> will go on there and they will say, hey, I had this kind of problem. This is what I did. Am I the asshole? It's kind of like um, Dear Abby for the new generation. Roger. And in this A-I-T-I, um, my 29-year-old female, oh, my, she's a 29-year-old female. And she said, my husband, who's 29, and I are pregnant. We're happy about it, but it all happened so fast, we didn't discuss details before. Now, let me stop her right there. It all happened so fast. It takes people the exact same amount of time to get pregnant as anybody else. It's like people that say, man, Christmas came early. It's always on December 25th, people. Always. Anyway, today, while we were fantasizing about our future, I kind of wisely or wistfully said the full name of our baby, gender neutral first name we chose, and my last name. He was upset and asked why I assumed they would take my name. I said it was because I thought he didn't care about his last name, whereas my last name is very important to me. Hmm. Anyway. Context, I never changed my last name when we got married because in my culture, this is uncommon and my name also has very heavy cultural and historical significance. I am extremely proud of it and I am also very proud with my extended family. My husband has no relationship with his family as his parents abandoned him to his uncle who abused him for years until he moved in with me. When we were getting married, he'd wanted to change his last name to mine because he felt like my family was his real family. 
which I was okay with, but eventually we decided he doesn't need to go through that hassle since he's part of our family regardless. He's never expressed any type of interest in his heritage, which is Irish, and even when I suggested we go visit Ireland, he was uninterested. But when it came to their future baby, the uh, OP's husband had different feelings. But And she goes on to say, but now he said people will think the kid is not his and that that's disrespectful to have kids and not take the father's last name. I was confused because he had never expressed any such sentiment before. I told him my last name is non-negotiable, so we can hyphenate it. Hmm, there it is. Um, he was resistant since both our last names are clunky and long, but eventually he said only if his name comes first. I got really annoyed at this and blah, 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 blah. I'm not going to go through the rest of it. It's pretty long, but um, he told does me. Does it I say was, her heritage? It does not. It doesn't even give the names. Hmm. I mean, well, we know he's Irish. Yeah. And she she closes with, he told me I was being an a-hole and left the house. It's been a couple of hours and he's not responding to my texts with, and he's only responding to my texts with one word responses. Okay. I, I'm going to start off here. She's First lucky. of all. He's before, responding. Yeah. But before you, I'm going to have my old man moment here. Okay. First, first of all, in my marriage, mm -hmm. I refuse to be dictated to, period. We can have a conversation, but you ain't going to tell me shit. Regardless of the hierarchy in today's, I, I, I am numero uno in this, in this household, period. You can agree to disagree. I don't care. So the conversation is real, but when she said that her name, that, that kind of rubbed me wrong, you know, not having my last name is non-negotiable. Well, how come it's, I mean, everything's negotiable. I agree with you, especially that first part. Little yeah. little thing here. Every year we get the Christmas picture together, the family. And, you know, because I was a wise ass last year or the year before last, I'm like, hey, let's put on our jerseys, custom jerseys for the whole family. Obviously, I was number one. Of course. My wife was number two, and my son was number three. That's the order, period. Exactly. No, no that's not up for debate either. Nope. <laughs> so I'm with you. Nope. I'm with so, you. Now, so. if we can, we're going to rule together as a team. Yes. You know, we're going to run this business as a team. Absolutely. But, but the final decision maker, you know, if there's a tie, <laughs> I break all tie ties. Tie goes to the runner. <laughs> Right. I break all ties. I, I, I mean, you know, in full disclosure, on a lot of things, my wife still uses her last name. I've never had a problem with that. But we knew from Jump Street, Darian's last name is Kearney. Period. Mm -hmm. End quote. Not a problem with that with me. I don't have a problem with hers. We did discuss it, though. It was I don't. Yeah, discussion. I think maybe she should or could have addressed it differently, maybe to get a different reaction. But to uh, it sounded like from what you were reading from her words it is just like I wouldn't expect my wife to be very receptive if I was dictating things versus let's get through this together, whatever, or let's do X, Y, Z together. Um, now, before we close so, it out, I want to back up on one part that she mentioned. He was mad because she said, okay, we can hyphenate it, which is fine. And he went and said, yeah, but my name has to come first. If he's smart, he understands that the second name is usually the father when it's hyphenated. Yeah. Um, I, once it's hyphenated, it just to me it's just stupid. It, it's stupid. It, it's just dumb. I don't know. It, it, that really depends too on the on the name, because she said they both have two clunky long last names. So that would be stupid. You want to be Edwards Jones or whatever? I'm just throwing that out there. 
I can kind of see that. But you can't be Salvador Jermansky or whatever. Right. <laughs> I mean, nor normally, like you said, the guy's name is going to be last, even in the hyphenated portion. But yeah. I, sounds like that they have sounds like that that their relationship is dictated on whatever she decides and if he's been okay with it so far and they've been through it you know for a while now been together for a few years then he really doesn't have an argument he's been uh, he's been agreeing this whole time so let her yep. wear the pants in the family i guess got nine months to figure it out and two if it's gonna be a blow up over something like this how long do you want your marriage to last? Right. Just putting it out there. All right. Enough about them people. They need to get their shit together. Back to us. Because, you know, the podcast is all about us. That's right. Um, I want to take a second. And we're going to go over this here. that good preparation there um all right now take the fact that you're chiefs can't chiefs fan out of the equation here for a second for me erase that from your mind if you can sebastian yeah. janikowski first year eligible for the pro football hall of fame before i even answer the question do you believe that he's a first ballot hall of famer and do you believe that he is a Hall of Famer, period? So I'm glad you let me lead off with this. So you had sent me this yesterday. So as I read it, the first time I read it, I'm not going to lie. My first reaction was absolutely unequivocally. Yes. That was my first reaction. Until I started to sit and think about it. I have then flipped to no, he should not be a first ballot Hall of Famer. And it's a 50-50 shot if he should be in there at all. Reasoning is why I started looking up his stats and things of that nature. He's only been to one Pro Bowl. If you were building a kicker and you wanted a kicker on your team, like I'm trying to win actual football games, Yes, Janikowski would be on my list. But for Pro Football Hall of Fame, meaning that there's only four in the hall, he's not going to get in before Vinatieri. And I think, I think Vinatieri will be the next kicker enshrined. Really, I mean, I can't really think of anything that out that, you know, stands out to me that Janikowski did. Besides have a really strong leg, you know, yeah, he was pretty accurate, but you know, he's got a he couple didn't help distance his records. True. I mean, but he didn't help his team win any Super Bowls. He didn't have any clutch kicks to where it just remember like, okay, the Raiders came back by 30 and won by a field goal. I, I just, those things, I mean, you might know that because you're a solid Raider fan and you follow him. So you have, a better knowledge, but as an outside fan, man, I just don't see it. And is he deserving? I mean, you could make an argument, but if if he held my feet to the fire, I would say no. Definitely not first ballot. Okay. I'm glad you let off first. That way, if Ricky agrees with you, it's not like the fix was in. No, because Chiefs fans said it first. I'm going to say it now. I do believe that he should be in the Hall of Fame. I do not believe that he should be first ballot. And I am Raider fan. We've got a couple good kickers in our history. Think about how long it took George Blanda to get into the Hall of Fame. Yeah, but he was also a quarterback. And it still took him a long time to get in the Hall of Fame. True, but he a was still kicker? a quarterback, too. I mean... Janikowski has a lot of records, like I said. He has a hell of a What leg. are they? Well, for a while, he had the longest field goal in the NFL. I believe Jason Elam from Denver broke that record. And then I think it went on to be broken again. 
I don't know who the current holder is, but it's either 63 or 64 yards is the longest field goal right now in the NFL, a regular season game. So I'm glad, and um, I just looked this up because I just was like, okay, who's, you know, what are the all-time NFL career leaders, you know? Janikowski is number 10. So does he really belong in the Hall of Fame? Nah. I mean, number one is Vinatieri. Two is Morton Anderson. Three, Gary Anderson. Now ask yourself, you know, are they in the Hall? No, they're not. Then, no, I mean. He doesn't have a mean, to stand on. You mean physically, like, will they ever be? I think Vinatieri will be. Well, they that's uh, what I'm saying. Until they get in, if they're higher up on that list, I don't think that Janikowski should get in. True. I mean, but Matt Stover is ahead of him. Ooh. It's not looking Robbie, too good. Robbie Gold is, a, is ahead of him. He's tied with Jason Elam. They've scored... He 436 points is what he's scored. Vinatieri has 599. Both I, Andersons, Morton has 565 and Gary has 538. Okay. So, I mean, he's, he, I don't think he ever sniffs the Hall of Fame. Top 10 kicker? Yes. Yeah. Hall of you know, Fame. After you, I don't after you think put out those facts, that 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 puts it out there in perspective. And I got to be honest. In order to be the man, you got to beat the man, and he got nine men in front of him that he didn't beat. Clearly, if he were to get in the Hall of Fame, I wouldn't be mad about it. If you were, but I, that would be one of those things where you have to scratch your head and say, "What's wrong with the Hall of Fame then?" So let's just go. You're you've been a Raider fan all your life. Mm -hmm. I've been a Chiefs fan all my life. Okay. Okay. Where would you rank Nick Lowry? Oh man, I I don't really remember how long his career was. Would he Would he be in the top twenty? I believe he would, because if I remember correctly, and you're the Chiefs fan, you know this better than me. Nick Lowry was damn good until they went to uh, grass. When the Chiefs was on that turf, he was unstoppable. I think he only played one year on grass and then he retired. I could be wrong. Uh, I mean, but I was just like, he's number 16 on the list. Your guy's number 10. So, I mean, that just puts it in perspective on how. Yeah. But, you know, if if you ask us both. Who is the better field goal kicker? Hands down, it's going to be Janikowski. Hands down. You know, but he's not that far ahead of Nick Lowry. Now, I will say this in closing, and Raider fan would have to agree with me everywhere. You ask that man to kick a 60 any yard field goal, he's got the distance. But he missed a lot of 30 and 35 yarders because of that hook. So yes. that so that, Nick La that plays into it. Nick Lowry has 386 points. Janikowski is 436. And played in just do the math real quick. Eh, almost 50 more games than Nick Lowry mm -hmm. in his career. And, you know, he's about 50 points, you know, behind. Wow. Yeah. So after looking at that, yeah, no, no way first ballot and no way will he be in there. I, I think say, we'll be I hard pressed. No way will he be in there because there's a chance that a couple of those no. guys that are ahead of him get in. No, he's not going to get in, man. There's only been four kickers the entire history. That's and there the are one thing he doesn't have going for him. There are three bona fide studs on that list that should be in there before him. And if they do one kicker every 50 years, your man will not make it in our lifetime. How's that? <laughs> uh, I will be sure and let my grandson know to watch the Hall of Fame numbers to see if he gets in. <laughs> and send it up to heaven. All let right. me know. 
Now we're gonna go I mean, back I'm to assuming the, that's where I'm going. We're gonna go. I hope that's where you're going. <laughs> Else I ain't never gonna see you again because I plan on being there. <laughs> I mean, I plan on it, but you know, ain't necessarily up to me. No, no, it's not. Um ah, man. All right, we're gonna go back to AFC West in a second, but I want to start off with the NFC West as we conclude our going all the way around the league. And the reason why I want to start with the NFC West is obvious because our teams are in the AFC West. NFC West, the Cardinals, the Rams, the Niners, and the Seahawks. Okay. Now, um, if I'm correct, they finished Niners, Seahawks, Cardinals. I mean, Niners, Seahawks, Rams, Cardinals last year. I don't see it being too different this year with the exception that it might flip-flop two and three. Um, the Niners, the, they've got that nice again. defense. They finished what last year? Uh, the 49ers were number one. The Seahawks were number two. The Rams were number three. And the Cardinals were number four. Okay. And I do think the 49ers will pick up where they left off. But I think the Rams will be a little bit better improved. Not much, but they'll make second place. The Seahawks will come back down to earth a little bit. They surprise a lot of people, but it won't be it won't go their way. And the uh Cardinals are a dumpster fire. They've already given up on um the who's the little midget quarterback they got? Kyler Murray. Yeah. They put him on IR for the first couple weeks. So, so they're I'm already gonna, gonna start 0 and 2. I wanna play devil's advocate with you here. Okay. Uh what has the Rams done to improve? I think injuries killed them last year. So I think that a healthy Who squad. Was oh, they had a lot of injuries, especially on the defensive end. And and the receivers kept getting injured. Now, they did lose Odell Beckham, but I don't think that's going to be a problem. I mean, well, he didn't even play for him last year because uh, he got uh, hurt in the Super Bowl. Yeah. He got hurt the Super Bowl the year before. They let him go last year. He wasn't even... He and he I, didn't. He wasn't on nobody's team last year. And I think the Baker Mayfield drama will be behind them since he's no longer on the team. Let Tampa yeah, Bay have I don't, that problem. I don't see the Rams doing anything. I, I think the, the division is going to be just like it is. Niners, Seahawks, Rams, Cardinals. I mean, I could, besides their defensive tackle and their quarterback and maybe one wide receiver, I'm going to ask you who else is on their team. You're going to tell me you don't know, and then I'm going to say I rest my case. So <laughs> we don't need to have this conversation any further. What conversation? <laughs> exactly. I, I can't. I can't. I can't deny that. That's the truth. That is the absolute truth. I do know that the Rams are super young. They are one of the youngest teams in the NFL this year. You know, and and Stafford is a is uh, a, a, he's an above average quarterback, um, but I just you know Niners Seahawks they're they're pretty tough, so it's going to be tough sledding for them to make it to the second or the first part of their division. Okay, now I want to turn my attention to. Last year, this time last year, I think we all were saying, oh, my God, this is going to be the division to beat. No, it wasn't. The AFC West, it was the Chiefs and everybody else. Not going to lie. That kind of chaps me right there. But the truth is the truth. And if I'm correct, obviously the Chiefs finished number one. The Chargers were two. The Raiders were three. And the Broncos were four. Um we're not even going to focus on three and four right now. I want to focus on the chargers for a second. Everybody says they're much improved. Tell me how on paper. They, everybody's always got them winning the championship on paper, but what do the chargers do? The chargers do what chargers do. They find a way to mess it up. And until they solve coaching, they are going to be exactly what they are, a paper champion. 
The Raiders. They're not even a paper champion. That that's true. The Raiders. In my heart of heart, I hope they don't improve because I need them to fire McDaniels so that we can get Gruden back. But reality tells me that they're going to go and finish 500. Why would you want Gruden back? I would want anybody except for McDaniels. Gruden had him going in the right direction. There's no, no... he didn't. They were a playoff team the year he left. Oh, my Lord. Playoff team by the but, skin of their teeth. But you know what? If you barely get in on the last day of the uh, regular season, you should be better the next year. They were worse. Right. And But it, even with Gruden, they were going to be worse. Ruggs had his issue. They lost that wide receiver. Yeah, they got Devontae Adams. But, I mean, still, not... Nah. <laughs> You need to look forward, not backward, my friend. Okay. Again, though, if we can get that'd be like of... me going, man. I I really hope that we mess up so we can get Marty Schottenheimer back. No, you don't want a dead man coaching. Cause... No, I'm just saying, using him as a, just as a you know as a. And, and you know what? I I I agree with you, but I still don't want McDaniel's there. He's not. I think he's gonna be. He. I think he's gonna be surprisingly. I think if if you just sit back and and watch what they're doing, because as an mm -hmm. outsider, I'm I'm pretty impressed with what the Raiders are doing. Like I'm picking I, them to be number two in the division. I I I am really willing to give him the benefit of the doubt. However, I just don't want too much of this Patriot Way stuff. Why it won six Super Bowls? Well, thank. You. See, you're speechless. next man up is the philosophy that I really want to zero in on. They were going to be prepared to go into the season without Jacobs. Don't do next man up with your running back situation. You pay that man. So I will put it on the GM and say but, he did a smart thing and paid him. So we got Jacobs in before the season starts. But if we hadn't, there's no way to sugarcoat it. That man was the rushing champ last year. By far and away. So you take your best player and you make sure that he's on the field. But see, now this is where, and, you know, I'm not trying to pour salt in the moon or be one of those uppity Chiefs fans or whatever. <laughs> but this is where I like what my team's thinking is uh, business wise. Okay. Mm hmm. Yeah, yes, I love Tyreek Hill in a Chiefs uniform. Who? Was, as a Tyreek Hill, I, I loved him as as shout a shout out uh, to the Miami fans. Uh, as a Chief, you know, when they traded him to Miami, as a fan, you're kind of like, oh my God, what's going to happen? And what we do, we go out and win the Super Bowl. You're actually better offensively without him. Correct. This year. We have the Chris Jones situation. And yes, in my fan heart, I'm scrambling here. But it's a business. You're not always going to be able to pay your favorite players. This is a business. Running back situation. Running backs are a dime a dozen in this league. Agreed. There should, you should not overpay a running back, period. I don't care how good they were the year before. There's always going to be somebody in the wings that can do just as well, if not better, for cheap. So that whole Jacobs thing with the Raiders, the fact that they signed him, yeah, that was great. Good for you guys, Raiders. But that, to me, that's not going to have a bearing whether he played or not as they're on their standings. They, now, they, are, they are built to go forward. I, I applaud um, both sides because he didn't want to be, obviously if he could have got 15 million, that would have been great. But his whole thing was, I want a long-term deal. They only wanted to go one year. So at the end of the day, they paid him a little bit more this year for a one well, they year. Fran they franchised him, right? He signed his franchise they were, tag no, basically, right? They, 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 they gave him a better deal. Franchise would have been 10.5. They signed him for 12. Okay. 
And their thought process was, we can give you a little bit more to make you happy. We need you here in camp. His thought process was, process was okay, a little bit of extra. I still got to prove myself. I have no problem with that. So I'm, go I'm going in. He doesn't need to prove himself. He well, won't be a Raider next year. Possibly not. I mean, possibly no, not. He, if this is how, if that's how it happened, look, mm -hmm. we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna pay you this year. You fucking cry, baby. That's what it sounds like the Raiders were telling him. We're we're gonna we're gonna pay you this year. You cry, baby. But next year, psh, we're we're gonna find somebody else. We're gonna draft a running back. Yeah, we'll we'll do something else. Because and, and, they, and they probably will. You know, look at what the Chiefs did with Pacheco. They got him in the seventh round. Mm -hmm. You know, we we did a first rounder on CEH. That was a complete bust. You but know, it started I'm off surprised. looking good. It started off looking good. Well, his first game, yeah. I mean, but he that's he didn't really do anything since then. Well, check um, Pacheco's an absolute got, beast. Yeah, Pacheco is is built different. He reminds me of Kareem Hunt. That's who y'all should have got. Yeah. Uh -uh. Or Dalvin Cook, who was that? Well, there. Cook's asking price was twelve mil, so we we got a running back already for twelve mil. So, I meant before you signed Jacobs, I would have probably been okay with that, except for the injuries as of late. Trade trade Jacobs over and get get Taylor over there. I could see that. I could see that better than Cook, younger. Uh, more value, a little bit more upside, but how effective would he be in our type of offense? Because we don't have as good an offensive line as the Colts did. Man, Taylor's a beast. I wish the Chiefs, I wanted the Chiefs to draft him that year instead of CEH. Imagine that. But they, they took him. I think, I, I, I'm i pretty sure Taylor went in the second round. All right. Um, and, but going back to the Chiefs, man, this Chris Jones situation, mm -hmm. I, uh, man, he's getting some really bad advice. And it's kind of frustrating as a fan to sit. I don't understand his, his mindset of willing to lose that amount of money because I think now that the Chiefs put him on the unable or the did not show up list or something like that, which means that he won't play the first two games, but we don't have to pay him those first two games right so i think each check was like a million something so almost you know two and a half million dollars they're not he's our he's lost that plus the million or so that he's already lost for preseason you know you're losing your um what's the word i'm looking for uh he he's losing his leverage with mm -hmm. the chiefs so i don't know Do you think it's, he'll report right before the start of the season, even knowing he's going to miss those first two games. Well, if he reports, theoretically, the Chiefs could play him. If hmm. he reports and would still have to pay him, they get a roster exemption for the first two weeks, which means that they could have 54 people on their roster versus 53. But... Well, it'd be 55 because well, this year you can have 54 because of the emergency quarterback rule. No, you still can only have 53 men on your roster. It, it, it's not a 54-man roster this year. It's still 53. Well, what's the emergency just, quarterback rule? Because The emergency quarterback rule is I can carry three quarterbacks on game day, but the third quarterback can only play if the first and the second quarterback are cannot play in anymore in that game. Oh, okay. So then that would be like when last year the 49ers right. Garoppolo was the third quarterback. They could have suited him up, but and Purdy went down and then the other guy went down after him. He could have or Trey Lance, I guess it was, wasn't it? Uh Purdy uh, and then Trey. Yeah. Yeah, I, I believe. And uh then he would have been able to they would have been able to suit or uh, put Garoppolo in the game and maybe had a better shot of playing against the Eagles. That's what that is. But they still they still only get 53 okay. overall. 
but right. it helps. That, that makes more it sense. Helps, then. It helps teams, you know, to have that third guy. You know, you don't have to have a third quarterback. Comes you know, I might though. want to hold an extra wide receiver. Well, the Chiefs are only ha- got two quarterbacks on their roster, so you know it is what it is. True, but I I, I think Chris Jones will eventually get back in the building. I think I think all he's going to do, and the Chiefs can theoretically, quote unquote, screw him if they want to, because they can franchise him next year, keep him out of free agency. Yeah. And hmm. by and then by the time he's actually a free agent, he'll be thirty ish years old. The money won't be there. Well, uh, the money's not going to be there anyway because I don't know how y'all's GM does it, but he is a master at manipulating and managing the salary cap. That doesn't hold well for five or six years. When you get to year six or seven you got to pay these people or send them on. So I would say in the next three years, the chief's entire roster is going to start to look drastically different, but that's uh, in three or four years right now. Define drastic different. Cause um, like, you mean like, you mean like the big dogs not there no more? Yeah. Well, Mahomes will be there. He's locked. He's locked. Kelsey, Kelsey, Kelsey will probably age out in four years. What I mean by maybe age out, he may want to consider retirement. He might start. To no, I know up. what I know what you mean, but maybe. Yeah. Um, your guys that are getting that big money on the offensive line, they can't request any big, big money. You either There's nobody the on our offensive line getting big money besides the left tackle we just signed from the Jaguars. OK, but if he has two good seasons and he wants more, you're going to franchise him in a couple of years or send him somewhere else. I'm just using examples. I'm not saying what's well, true happen, but I um, mean, but by then I, I think he'll, by then I think he'll be older, you know, cause I think we signed him to a four or five year deal, 80 million bucks. Yeah. Hey, just wrapping it up though. Um, I do want to say the Raiders will be in first place. Then you know, I'm kidding. Uh, it's going to be chiefs. I'm going to choke on this. Chargers, Raiders, Broncos, just like last year. I'm going Chiefs, Raiders, and then the Chargers, Broncos, really, I think the Broncos will be improved. I think they'll be improved. Yeah. You think the Raiders will be better than the Chargers? Sean Sean Payton's going to make a difference. I think he will, but I think he's going to do it in the way that people are going to be like, damn. Too bad Russell Wilson ain't starting anymore. Yeah, he's going to steal some games. I think they might steal a game from every team that they play in our division. The law of I mean, averages still, says eventually they're going to beat the Chiefs. Eventually. I mean, they're, they're due. They're, yeah. they're due. So don't be surprised if it happens, Chiefs fan. It happens. It's a free country. If I want to give interviews, I'll give interviews. You know what your problem is? You're too modest. Hey, I give good quotes. And you can print that on the front page. Anthony Hardaway, best player in basketball, guarantees championship. Guarantee. You can't say stuff like that. Let me just tell you this. I'm an intricate part of the Magic organization. Now, Penny's the team leader, but I'm the choreographer for the Magic Dance. Get you a job if you want. Hey, whoa, whoa. Penny, stop the call. That was Tyra Banks, boo. And we're back. And uh, real quick, though, winding down this NFL stuff, I, I want to say two things. One, yeah, don't get my words wrong. You know, I'm talking a lot of trash. If the Raiders do good, I'm proud of my team. I really am. And if McDaniel shows me something, which... I put I still put a lot of the blame on him from last year because he called a lot of bad plays. So step up, be a good coach if you want to be recognized as a good coach. I understand you're from that Belichick tree, but uh, the apples that have fallen from that tree as of late have uh, all been rotten. So step up. I I just see your patriot hate from uh, the Tuck rule clouding your 
mindset when it comes to What are you to talking about? There's no such thing as the tuck rule anymore. Convenient. Right. Right. So, I mean, I, I see that. You know, I, I'm going to go out, like I, I said this last year, and I think, what, next week we're doing our big football extravaganza show or whatever, but uh, I, just a little tease. I, I'm I'm putting Raiders in the category where I put the Jaguars last year. They're a dark horse in the AFC. They have the potential to do some damage. And, and if they do that, if they surprise me, hey, that's my team. Ride or die, but uh, I don't want a middle of the road team. I, I really don't because middle of the road teams are usually teams that are on the decline or teams with a lot of potential that don't live up to it. And you look at the youth on this squad, they have potential. So they've got say, no if, excuses. If, if you are the middle of the road team, the reason's going to be that latter part. They just didn't live up to their potential, but there is that knowing that 2024, you know, they're going to take that next step. Uh, I think, I think Jimmy should have been that. Well, I don't know because the quarterback and everything was in disarray. And I know you got Jimmy Garoppolo and, and, you know, basically it's Derek Carr 2.0. However, Derek's stats were better. True, Not however, much, but however, Garoppolo grew up under McDaniels, yeah. So, I think that relationship is going to mean a lot, just like the Jets with Aaron Rodgers and Nathaniel Hackett. Mm -hmm. That relationship's going to mean a lot. I get that. Man, I got a lot to think about before our NX, NFL extravaganza next week. Hey, before we close out, though, you and I both watched episode Uno and Dos of Ahsoka. And yeah, I broke down and did it. Today, we are not talking about episode three because episode three does not come out till a little bit later today. So by the time you guys get this, we're you're going to be behind. Don't worry. We'll catch you up with episode three next week. But Share me with me your thoughts on episode one and two so far. What do you think about the show? Um, so far I was I was uh, fairly impressed. You know, I thought it was put together well. Um, I kind of like where the storyline's going. Mm -hmm. Um, I did not realize that this is the live action. Uh, I guess sequel to the cartoon Star Wars Rebels. Rebels. Yeah. I, I did not realize that uh, until, you know, in the middle of watching the first show. Um, but, you know, for the most part, I mean, if I had to give it a grade, I'd, I'd say a solid B, you know, from what I've seen so far. I, I hope that they tease Thrawn a little bit sooner versus Ladder. I know they've talked about him, mm -hmm. but I would like to see him visually. You know, I don't want it to be just the last two episodes of the season you know what i mean we're looking at like you mandalorian see, uh season three right we i would like to see some some more stuff when it comes to it you know um but so far so good i, I agree with you on that b grade and i too would like to see uh, a lot of thrawn don't just push him to the back end at the same time don't do that with anakin either if you're gonna put hayden christensen in there put all kind of flashbacks in there or force ghost, whatever you're going to do with them. Don't push him till the last three episodes either, because then that just cheapens it. It's like, Hey, you waited this long. Here's your cameo. Yeah. I mean, with the Hayden Christensen thing, I'm okay with, if they were to wait and only show just a few things, like he was just a minor role in it. Kind of like how Luke Skywalker was in Mandalorian season two. I think it was, mm -hmm. um, you know, I, because we've seen Anakin's storyline play out live action. We've seen it. We've never seen Thrawn in a live action deal. That's so, true. But here's the reason why I'm going with it this way. All right. You remember the Inquisitor from episode two? Or was it episode one? She fought the Inquisitor for a few seconds before he got away. Well, are those Inquisitors? 
Oh, no, no, no. You're talking about with the robot. Yeah, the robot was with an Inquisitor wearing all black. There's a theory that this was one of the last Inquisitors that Darth Vader trained. So wouldn't it be fan-freaking-tastic if that turned out to be true and Vader's apprentice is fighting Anakin's apprentice? Hmm. That's very tantalizing right there. Ergo, we need some flashbacks. So Plus, spe- she's also taken uh, uh, um, Sab- Sabine under her wing. That's her apprentice. So we should see well, flashbacks was- knowing, hey, this is how I came up. This is what you need to learn. Well, and we know that from Rebels that she was already her apprentice till they fell out, you know. Yeah. And Ahsoka walked away. But, um, Here's here's a question. The two dark Jedi that are in this episode, mm-hmm. these episodes, are they Sith? I mean, I know they've got the red blades, but they're not calling themselves Sith. They they did call themselves Jedi's. Yeah. Um, that's that in between thing there. They're not inquisitors. I need to see what their goal is, their end game, because I don't think they want to rule the galaxy. I don't think they want absolute power, but they, they do did want say, power. They did say that they wanted to restart the Empire. They did mm-hmm. say that. Which um, is why they want to see Thrawn. They want to they want to find Thrawn. And if the lightsaber crystal bleeds till it turns red, if that's canon. Let's see how their color changes are on their lightsabers by the end of this thing. What do you mean? Uh, force manipulation. If you're a full, full on Sith, the reason why Sith all have red lightsabers, they went totally to the dark side. And the crystal right. bleeds. That's what makes it red. Right now, their lightsabers are orange. No, they're you, red. They're orange. No, they're red. They're orange. Change color on no. TV. They're orange. No, they're not. They are red. I'm going to look at it closely again today, but I believe they are orange. Yeah, you need to get your cataracts fixed, my friend. I probably do. <laughs> I probably do. Probably looking at TV like Mr. Magoo. Because I don't, I mean, because if they were orange, they would be uh, the Nomad Jedis, right? Up until last week, I didn't even know they had orange lightsabers. Uh, and then I also, on a side note, the guy that's playing the older Jedi, uh, I didn't realize he died in real life. Yeah. Ray Stevenson, rest in peace, Ray Stevenson. Um, so yeah, this could be one of his final roles. Yeah. It says here that, uh, dark orange said, lightsabers might suggest that they are closer to the dark side than the light side. So they are willing to use dark side powers without necessarily completing their downfall to the dark side. Oh, and it says Balin Skull, which is Ray Stevens' character, wielded the dark orange lightsaber. So, and... I'm going to uh, take this What's round. No, Balin you're not. Skull. B-A-Y-L-A-N, and the last name is S-K-O-L-L. Well, in this picture, it is dark orange. I will, I will say that, but that is not the color it looked on the TV. They they are close because they they call them blood orange. So, no, no, I mean, the, I actually thought they were red, red lightsabers. But this picture that I just pulled up from the series, he is, it is, it's it's orange. You can clearly see the difference. So I sit corrected. It's all good, my brother. Uh, I guess my cataracts need some some adjusting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. so okay, so, I'm interested. I'm, that's going to be. So then, so let's let's talk timeline. So this is after Return of the Jedi. So uh, approximately I, five years after, I think last week when i talked to you i said it was three it's actually approximately five 
because so obviously the first the Vader... season of the Mandalorian actually takes place three years after Return of the Jedi. So it's been a couple of years since then. So obviously Vader and the Emperor are dead. Yes. Yes. But Luke is out there somewhere. Yes, he's uh, he's training Jedi on that uh, planet that Ahsoka was on in. Uh, I think it was the Book of Boba Fett, or was it uh, season two of the Mandalorian? Uh, I think it was. I think it was Mandalorian because that's how he got Grogu back. But I think it, I think it was the Book of Boba Fett because people were pissed when season three of the Mandalorian started with him already with Grogu, and they're like, "When did this happen?" Because ah, they didn't right. watch the Book of Boba Fett. You're right. You are right. You are right. Well, where I was leading to this is I'm curious. Are we going to see an heir to the Empire trilogy type thing? Since they're bringing Wouldn't back Grand nice. Admiral Thrawn? Wouldn't that be nice? Because, you know, the characters of like Myra Jade would be fun well, to see in real life. See, this is where the Kathleen Kennedy thing comes into play. Mm -hmm. He screwed that up with the uh, episode seven, eight, and nine. By then, Luke should have had a wife. His son was named Ben, not Han, Han and Leia's son. That messed right. everything up. Because Han and Leia had twins. Yeah. Jason and I don't remember the girl's name. But, uh, but no, I'm not saying that they have to go the actual book trilogy you know basically the way the books came out mm -hmm. but start introducing that type of storyline whether it be a new storyline or whatnot but you know meeting Myra Jade because she actually worked for Thrawn yeah tried to kill Luke at, you know times. on that yeah right um so yeah was bait okay so just digging into your to your Star Wars brain here because I can't remember who was the cloned Jedi in the heir of the Empire that, that was Luke, Luke was talking to no no no, no. that oh, Luke thinking... was talking to because Luke found that clone Jedi who went crazy I think he was in the book two of the heir of Empire was that he... Balin Skull no he's an all new character Balin is. Oh, okay. I don't remember okay. the name. I, there's been a couple of uh, clones. I just remember that there was a book series with Luke having a clone. Had two U's in the name. Gotcha. Luke, no, this is in the... This is a different one, though. This yeah. is in the Air of the Empire series. That I'd trilogy. Have, I'd, I'd have to pull Take those books that. out and see, but yeah. Um, man. See, now, now you got me wanting to reread some stuff. I just re I just remember that just I've read them many 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 moons ago. So I still got to read I'm those just, three new Thrawn books by Timothy. Just Thrawn. going by off of I'm reading the first one. I'm almost done with it actually. The first one is pretty good. Uh, but I also would like to see maybe a Thrawn spinoff series. Yeah, and the only reason why I'm saying this because in this book that I'm reading, Thrawn fought alongside Anakin Skywalker right around the Clone War time. Yes. And then Anakin told the Emperor about him. And then obviously he doesn't meet the Emperor until this this next set of books here. But um yeah, I you know, I would like to see maybe a spinoff of that. I'm I'm actually looking forward to seeing him on live action. Mm -hmm. Now I will say this uh, too I want to make sure That they portray him as a master Tactician because that yes. Was his thing Yes that's his race That's that's what is yeah. The Chiz ain't that what they are The Chiz or something I like that I believe you're right yes Um, That's that's the race That's what they're known for And yeah. in the book Those three books that you're talking about From Timothy's on mm -hmm. Uh the one where he where it just shows Thrawn's face on the front, that one, mm -hmm. it actually goes into quite a bit of detail of his tactician brain, how he moved up in the ranks so fast and things like that. So it's it's pretty interesting. And they did mention him in uh, season three of The Mandalorian. So, All what's right. that? Uh, Thrawn. 
They did? When they finally started showing uh uh what uh what was the uh, bad guy's name? Um God, I, I I'm forgetting his name. But uh he was in the last two episodes of season three of The Mandalorian. When he was talking to uh -huh. the rest of the council, they were like, Well, you finally graced us with your presence. Now if we could just finally get Thrawn to come back. It was just in there and out, and that was it. They just mentioned Man, it. I'm gonna I'm gonna have to go back and look at that. I don't remember that. Yeah. Watch when he's talking to all of them on the hologram projectors. They're all gathered. And he comes in and he's like, Yeah, don't worry about the Mandalorians. I have a plan to take care of them. We've retaken Mandalore. Um I'm trying I'm gonna look up that guy's name real quick. Okay. Um, because it, it escapes me. Oh. Moff, Jean, Moff Gideon. Moff Gideon. Giancarlo Esposito. Yeah. Moff Gideon. I knew who he, the actor was. I just couldn't think of what his... Oh, so that makes so much sense. That ties... Okay. So yeah. you just connected a dot from the book I'm reading. And anyway. Interesting. See, that's what I like about Dave Filoni. He's faithful to the source, source material. Again, I'm looking at you, Kathleen Kennedy. Um, so what were the two versions? So you have canon and you have what? They called the other one um, Legends. The Legends. Yeah. So but so basically that everything that's... under the rug is just called Legends. So it's just so tales that don't people really told. Count, basically. Yeah. But the gotcha. way Dave Hopefully... is doing it, he's bringing things back. To make them count. Hopefully episode 7, 8, and 9 will go to the Legends category. Yeah. And we can actually build off of that. We'll see. So, I mean, they're, they're more than welcome to go earlier than that, too, if they want. I mean... Well, I mean, I'm just saying, I would love to see an Old Republic uh, live-action series. I know we've said that before. But I would love to see that. That like was a Darth, in the works. A Darth Bane series would be great. You know that was in the works. Uh, I don't know how far back it goes, but it does take place during during Old Republic times. It's called the Acolyte, and they started filming it. Don't know how far they got to it because of the writer strike and the um the uh, actor strike. So uh, we'll have to keep an eye on that. It's called the Acolyte, and they've already okay. started production. Excellent. Looking forward to it. All right, my brother, we're going to shut it down this week, but we will be back with y'all next week. More fun, more good times, because we're slightly warped. Show, take us on out of here. Hey, don't forget to hit the like button and then the subscribe button and then the hit your notification. So when we update, you guys will know that we are online. Appreciate you uh, tuning in. Uh, love each other, because as always, tomorrow is not promised. Love, love you guys. Love you, brother. See you next week. You guys take care.